There's always quite a stir at Applebee's uh, when they call, You two! Party of four! <laughs> I would say. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It is episode 381. We're in the first week of August of 2024. This is primarily our SummerSlam preview episode. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. We definitely are not going to talk about our uh, the uh, the pastor of our church growing up <laughs> and how much how much he resembles current Dave Mike Myers. <laughs> that would be a huge digression. It would be a waste of everyone's time, but so we won't be doing that. No, I would just like to ask the listener. Listener, have you seen Mike Myers lately? It's the damnedest thing you ever saw. And I was uh, thinking, you're like, oh, maybe I saw him a couple years ago. No, this is more recent than that. You have to Google like Mike <laughs> Myers 2024. <laughs> it's it's something else, man. It's like, I guess people just age. What do you know about that? But uh, yeah. All right. So um yeah, we're not going to talk about Mike Myers <laughs> resembling our, uh, the pastor of our church growing up. We are going to talk about WWE SummerSlam. We're going to get there in a second. First, Shane McMahon and Tony Khan. Who leaked the photo? Well, Shane gave a statement to Busted Open Radio. <laughs> he gave a statement to Bully Ray. The so man that... who canceled the New Japan ambulance. Go that's ahead. Right. <laughs> uh, that's right. So I think Shane, right? <laughs> Well, I, mean, I think Tony did comment as well and just said, like, it was a nice meeting. He's a cool guy or something. But there, so I guess they both commented on it technically. But I, I guess I can I can say this because it's it's unsourced, uh, just rampant speculation. Yeah, I have. I heard Tony Khan leaked it. Okay. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's true. I don't know. I don't know who stands to gain from this, but I was under the impression that, that Tony Khan leaked it. It was a bizarre photo. Agreed. Uh, I guess I guess if it's just a little way to like mess with the McMahons and by extension their former son-in-law Paul Levesque, I guess that's fine. I guess, I guess that's fun. If you're actually talking about bringing him in and this was like a canary in the coal mine to see how mad people got or didn't get I guess I don't know, man. That sounds terrible, but you know, it's not my money. So, so AEW owner Tony Khan met with Shane McMahon apparently in a conference room in like uh, Arlington, Texas, at some point this week. And uh, Shane says they were connected by a mutual friend. They had a good talk. They talked about the challenges and rewards of working <laughs> with family, <laughs> which is a hilarious phrase. <laughs> And, the challenges uh, of your father <laughs> disowning <laughs> you and firing you, basically. Sure. And then uh, this has just led to rampant speculation from all sides about um, a photo of the meeting leaked online. I like what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> who? Uh, who? Who? All right, I, I just I I don't get it. I don't think it, I I think this is a uh, this is a fun forty eight hours in the news cycle, and uh, well I think we'll never hear about this again. But um, or maybe Shane McMahon is wrestling at Wembley Stadium. I don't know. He look as you like to remind me, he did sell a lot of tickets with the Undertaker at that that WrestleMania in Dallas. <laughs> he sure did, but like, there's uh, a that's... noticeable bump when he went on the card. But that was. 10 years ago almost yeah yeah so there you go um yeah i don't know what you would do with them i get i don't you have i mean darby already has a match at that show i was be like is he is he at 60 or whatever he's not 60 but he's like 48 or whatever he is 55 i think 55 okay so he's not he's not a young man like is he gonna is he gonna do a stunt i mean i guess you could do a crash pad or something i'm just trying to envision what shane mcmahon doing anything on television would look like because the last time he got in the ring he tried to do a leapfrog and immediately tore his quad in one of the funniest moments in professional wrestling history 
And that's another reason I don't want to see him because you're never going to top that. Go out on top, Shane. Shane is 54, by the way. Okay. He'll turn 55 in January. Like, I just, and it, like, so you bring him in. I don't, he just, he doesn't have the charisma to be a regular television, like a speaker. Like, he was fine as, like, the baby face GM when him and Danielson were doing it together, I guess. But as soon as they made him, like, a heel, he, it was dreadful. It was part of some, like, the worst television in the history of the company. Like, the stuff with him and Miz and him and Braun and, like, just him just being all over every show. Like, just, oh, it was the worst. So, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't want him. I don't want to see him anywhere near. And I mean, I don't want to see him on WWE television either. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know what anyone would gain. I don't know what he would gain other than a middle finger to Paul and maybe his dad. But I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, so there you go. That's what everyone's buzzing about this week is Shane McMahon meeting with Tony Khan. Well, that and Logan Paul's tweets. Uh, Logan Paul, um, to the surprise of no one, is a right wing dipshit (laughs) with bad opinions. And clearly, he's a right wing dipshit in the same way that, like, everyone that has spent a great deal of time on YouTube and Twitter is, you know, there's like a very, he's a very specific type of, uh, of that guy. And yeah, decided to weigh in on something. He didn't know what he was talking about. So, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure I bet if I know my man, Phil, I'm sure there's, there's a real stern rebuttal coming from punk any day, any minute now. Well, well, there you go. Hang on here. Okay. Um, AEW Dynamite this week, the follow-up show to Blood and Guts last week, and uh, their first week going up against the Olympics. Sounds like a bad time for me. Um, uh, what did you think of Dynamite this week? It had the uh, the Will Ospreay and Lance Archer match, and mm-hmm. then it uh, closed with the first time ever Hangman Page uh, Darby Allen match. Yeah, some some solid wrestling on the show. Uh, not a lot of like. It felt like a holding pattern show, maybe because they knew they were going to get killed going up against the Olympics. But uh, I mean, the only thing. The, the only thing that it felt like, okay, this is different than it was last week is they added a new stipulation to the Danielson swerve match, which is that uh, Brian Danielson had, and the announcers and everyone have been phrasing this as his last year as a full-time wrestler or his retirement from full-time pro wrestling. But he said categorically, if I lose at Wembley, I will never wrestle again. So I guess there are, enhanced stakes to that match now that we're not there a week ago but otherwise yeah kind of just a like i said a holding pattern show i mean darby and hangman on first time ever match one you could argue they could have you know should have made a bigger deal out of because these are like two of your biggest non-former wwe stars on your roster and they've never wrestled before it maybe should feel like a bigger deal but uh, yeah, Darby, they had a match and Darby pinned him and the hang, hangman uh, mental health spiral continues as he and Jeff Jarrett continue on their collision course for Wemsley. Well, there you have it. Um, week two of Camille as part of the Mercedes Monet Act. Mm-hmm. Not a whole lot to report there. I like her gear. Um, didn't think much of the match. <laughs> No, they and they, they um, uh, they did not give her a great opponent. Mm-mm. So there's that. Um, all right. So that's what's going on uh, around the world, and now WWE SummerSlam. Clearly, the main event of this show uh, should probably be CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre. Except that everyone thinks Roman Reigns is coming back as a baby face on this show. Uh, are we getting Roman Reigns on this show as babyface? What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Like, it feels like it fits the timeline of how they do these things. 
Um, and there's probably who was it? Cena returned at a SummerSlam a couple of years ago. Yes, or Brock. Brock, Brock did actually. Brock came out and killed Cena at a SummerSlam. That's a right. Years ago. That's right. So they, but they they've done you know end of the show. You think it's over, and then somebody's music hits at SummerSlam a couple of times in recent memory. So, uh, yeah, this is as good a time as any to do that. I think. Uh, and you set up your fall program. Roman doesn't have to work, actually work a match probably until is there another Saudi show between now and Survivor Series? There usually is. Yeah, like an October uh, one. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head. Let's... That's right. Let's just assume he'll work the Saudi show and then they'll probably do their bloodline uh Bloodline Wolfpack versus uh Bloodline Hollywood Hollywood uh uh war games match in, in November. So that's the rest of the year of SmackDown sewn up there. Yeah. So they have Bad Blood coming up the first week of October. They have Crown Jewel coming up Saturday, November 2nd. Yes. And then Survivor Series, which is announced for Vancouver today for November the 30th. After Thanksgiving. Is it Interesting. After Thanksgiving? It used to be before Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving night mm. or Thanksgiving Eve sometimes. All right. Well, that's all fascinating. Uh, SummerSlam. Uh, the Cody Cody Rose defending the undisputed WWE Championship against Solo Sokoa. We've talked about this a little bit. Um, it feels like generally the bloodline, the solo bloodline running wild is um, a pretty, pretty hot angle. Mm-hmm. Mainly because of Jacob Fatu. Yes, <laughs> almost exclusively. And he brings an intensity to everything that, uh, and, and a feeling of danger that doesn't exist in modern pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I don't know. I just uh, it's this is this is Cody Rhodes versus Solo, and then I think uh, the Bloodline starts to fight each other. And then Cody moves on to I don't know what Logan Paul and at the next, at the Saudi show I don't know. Well, you, I guess we'll we find know out. he's eating an RKO one of these one of these weeks soon. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about the uh, forgot about Randy uh, Larkin. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Uh, we mentioned CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre with Seth Rollins as the referee. The true main event of the show, and we'll find out if uh, CM Punk is in fact a thousand percent washed as uh, as it would appear. Yeah, we'll see. Um, I don't know, it feels like this peaked six weeks ago <laughs> before they did the same angle four times. Yeah, um, probably would have behooved them to just do the maybe do the WrestleMania bit and then. Punk not show up again until until Money in the Bank or something. Sure. Uh, but they didn't. And look, you're trying to get your money's worth. Him being on some of those shows leading up to WrestleMania and after Mania led to nice, nice ticket sales and and all that. I understand you're you're paying him a lot of money. You want him, you want to get your mileage out of him. So I understand why he was on TV the whole basically the whole time he was hurt. But yeah feels like this peaked a while ago. It's still very heated. They added the element of Seth as the ref. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's I, I didn't I didn't love the final angle they did. I thought it was I mean, I thought it was fine. And there were some some funny lines in there. I don't I don't I don't buy punk getting mad over the bracelet thing. But uh, whatever. It was fine. It's fine. Uh, I. I I worry for Drew's lot in life after this match because I'm pretty confident he's eating the GTS and the one, two, three here, brother. And uh, then Punk is pretty clearly going to move on to Seth after that. So uh, good luck. Maybe you can, I don't know, maybe he can get get, uh, get moved to SmackDown and, and feud with Cody or something after that. Punk, uh, moving on to Seth. I mean, obviously someone called out that uh, he's re- 
he's rebooking uh, Brett's 1997 mm -hmm. uh, with this feud. And, um, yeah, they probably could have just left it. Punk used the phrase a hat on a hat <laughs> on <laughs> on Raw on Monday to, to describe Seth Rollins yeah. being the guest referee. Really, I think the bracelet is the ultimate hat on a hat. It's like there's plenty of reasons for CM Punk and Drew McIntyre to be angry with one another and to want to fight. Yeah. And to your point, uh, is Phil really that mad that someone stole his friendship bracelet? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, Punk and McIntyre with Seth as the referee. And then uh, Punk, uh, Seth will accidentally crack Drew with the chair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Seth will angrily count the pin and slide out of the ring and then we're off to the races except there's no title on the line of that feud going forward otherwise uh yeah it's uh it's sean and brett 1987 so that's fine yeah it's just this also that promo really just exposes the problem i have with the very core of seth rollins <laughs> as a character which Good is boy. that he comes out in his little blouse and he dances and he's giggling and he's all, all look how over the top and silly he is. And then he's like trying to cut a serious angry promo while wearing the sunglasses and the little blouse. And it's like, okay, you can either be a like you can either be a wild goop. I don't know. Certain people could pull off dressing very ostentatiously and also being a serious badass. Randy Savage could. Uh, Seth Rollins cannot. So he should probably pick one or the other. Um, but I guess it people seem to weird. like him and they like singing his song, so it's fine. They do like those things. And it's weird though that he just uh he just took his wife's gimmick. His <laughs> wife's his wife's heel gimmick was I'm uh big time and I'm going to dress outlandishly and uh me like she was bored, I think. And mm -hmm. then uh, and then Seth just started dressing the same way. And now his wife is gone. Now we don't got no wife no more. <laughs> and uh, and he's still dressing like that. So sure is. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe more hats. Maybe he needs to add more hats to the repertoire. Perhaps a few more uh, yeah, accoutrements. Perhaps an even puffier shirt. We'll, yes. uh, we'll really get him to the next level. Yeah. Uh, all right. So there's the top two matches on the show. Sam Zayn defending the Intercontinental title against Braun Breaker. They beat Braun Breaker clean as a sheet at the last pay per view because they didn't want him to win it on a B show. They <laughs> wanted him to win the title on an A show. That's a stupid way to look at everything. <laughs> so then, why did they book the match on the B show where <laughs> Sammy would beat Braun clean in the middle? There's just there's 86 things you could have done that didn't involve Braun getting pinned. Like, I just it's such a stupid argument. It's it's a bad argument no matter what, but like could have been a three-way and Sammy pins the other guy. Could have just Sammy could have just wrestled anybody else. Braun could have been in the ladder match where he could do some impressive stuff, but it doesn't hurt him to not win it. Right. Could have could have just waited a month to really start shoving Braun. But no, it's like you did it and you pinned him and then you have to work backwards to try to justify why you did it. It's like, no, you should, it's just it's because because <laughs> you're stupid. In this case, at least it's because you're stupid and you didn't think it through or he was supposed to win at the last show. And then you got cold feet at the, at the night at the 11th hour for whatever reason, and then came up with a dumb reason that doesn't make sense why you did it afterwards. Precisely. Logan Paul defending the United States championship against LA Knight, LA probably going to win the, uh, the mid card title here. I think, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't I don't feel like having the like Logan Paul as a wrestling character is the same to me whether he has this belt or he doesn't. Sure. So, you can give L L and LA Knight we've kind of talked about has been a little bit listless for the last like 7 months. They've um, pulled him off. They've pulled him off on purpose. For sure. And like he I mean he 
if people even remember, like he beat AJ at WrestleMania and then AJ went into a feud with the world champion. <laughs> like it was a very classic. It's actually very similar to what happened when AJ came into the company. But <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, give him a moment and, uh, you know, reward the people that still chant for him when he comes out every week. And it doesn't hurt Logan Paul at all to lose the belt because like I said, I don't think his character, his character is not really, uh, affected by not having that belt so uh yeah i think la Knight should probably win here but they could always just kill him again <laughs> kill him more they could they could logan usually works for the saudi shows because of the big paydays and um I'm not sure I'm not sure about that by the way we're read a transcript of an interview with uh the maximum male models this week explaining the way that they got paid in WWE and it's like calculus beyond anything that I'm capable of understanding. <laughs> so I, I think maybe we've been misled that people like working the Saudi shows because there's a, a big payday attached to it when really everybody kind of gets paid what they're going to get paid and WWE just puts people on those shows that make more money because the show grosses more money? I'm not sure. Anyway. Again, another digression. The cost <laughs> is six minutes. Uh, Liv Morgan will defend the Women's World Championship against Rhea Ripley. People seem to like this angle. It seems to be really hot with the 18 to 34 year old crowd. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. People over 50 have stopped watching Raw, but people under 50 have started watching Raw in the last 365 days. And uh, I guess they're attributing this to Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley uh, uh, being over. I don't, I'm not sure. Anyway, Liv and Rhea are feuding over uh, Rhea's boyfriend, <laughs> even though she's married in real life. Mm -hmm. so and is <laughs> so is her boyfriend. Yes. And um, I guess Liv is gonna uh, do, I don't know burn his burn him in effigy. I, I'm not entirely sure. That but uh, Liv, Liv thing on Monday. yeah, worst. Liv has like the whole thing has been. Well, Rhea's whole thing is that she's the traditional man in the relationship with Dom, right? Uh -huh. That's the whole thing. And then Liv's whole thing <laughs> in stealing. Uh, stealing Dom from Rhea and stealing everything from Rhea was uh, she's the empowered uh, woman or whatever and then she just cut a bad stereotypical psycho girlfriend if I can't have you no one can have you promo on, on Raw on Monday where she was like burning stuff in a barrel it's like well people seem to like this I don't understand it but people seem to like it so there you go uh, you know, I guess if you've never swum in the ocean, a kiddie pool seems deep to you. Uh, I don't know. Um, what? I'm saying I think this is incredible. I'm saying this is bad. But if you only watch wrestling, <laughs> maybe you think it's good. Oh, thank because you. It's like a storyline with, it, you know, with drama and twists and turns. It's like, yeah, if you've never watched a real TV show, I could see why maybe this would be good. Uh, no, I'm being overly harsh because I don't like it. I, I think it's. You. it's it's uh it's okay it's it's not for me uh but as you said it obviously is generating a lot of uh of excitement in the audience and look it does it does add a little intrigue to the match is dom really in Rhea's corner is he gonna cost her the title will Rhea win clean and then they'll just keep feuding for like another three months anyway probably uh but you know, it, it adds a little bit of intrigue, I guess, what to again and, and on the lowest of, you know, grading on the lowest curve imaginable. I'm just happy that it's getting to a wrestling match after four months of skits and vignettes and promos uh, of these these two. Really, it's just been Dominic and, and Liv because Rhea has been hurt since like the week after WrestleMania. So, right. uh, yeah, I am uh, quite ready for this to uh get in the ring and hopefully like i said hopefully we just we just do what we're gonna do when we move on but 
assuming like we talked about, I think last week, well, if, if Dom does turn, then him and Liv are like a heel act. And then Rhea and Damian Priest or Jey Uso or somebody are going to, they're going to have a mixed tag feud, I guess. At least that would be a little bit of uh, advancement to it. At least we get Jey Uso back working tag matches. <laughs> Where he belongs. <laughs> Not a gifted singles wrestler. He is not. <laughs> He's... Oh man, has a man been sick? You know, people used to talk about Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan. Is he over or is the catchphrase over? Right, right. And it's like, well, you can look at, and we always point to the idea. Well, they tried to give the yes chance to Big Show, and they <laughs> tried to give him to John Cena and whoever else. Or just make right. them like a, a WWE Universe TMCR chant. And none of it worked as well as when Danielson was there. Uh, sure. So, like, but when you take away the yeet <laughs> from Jey Uso, what does this man have? Bad wrestling matches is the answer. <laughs> Bad wrestling matches and cheap looking sunglasses. Correct. Yeah, there we go. Two more matches to preview here on the SummerSlam show. Bailey versus Nia Jax for the WWE Women's Championship with Tiffany Stratton, Ms. Money in the Bank in Nia Jax's corner. Uh, Kesha? Yeah, I mean, I guess. <laughs> Just because I don't feel like anyone else is lined up to work Bailey, unless it's just going to be Nia for another three months, which is, again, always a possibility. Um, but yeah, I mean, that would make sense. Cause then out of that, either Naya helps Tiffany win and then Tiffany's the champ and Naya's her heavy, uh, or, you know, Tiffany is like the even more diabolical heel and, you know, steals the title from her friend. And then you could do a three way or you could turn Naya baby face or whatever and, and do what you want. From there. <laughs> but I love, I love baby face Naya. It's <laughs> Babyface Nia works, was but... super over for like a week. Yeah, it worked and then for like one she minute. She started talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they had to watch her wrestle where and Alexa talk. Bliss had to get the heat on her. And they were yes. like, nah, this ain't working. <sighs> yeah. No, this is bad actually. But yeah. yeah, you could, you could, yeah. So Tiffany could win the show here, or you could just <laughs> kick the can down the road. But it does feel like the fall is destined to be Bailey versus Tiffany and Naya in some capacity because it just doesn't really feel like anybody else is uh, being heated up uh, for her. And she's already beaten like Chelsea Green and, and do drop on TV a whole bunch. Yeah. Um, one more match to preview here. Damian Priest versus Gunther. The world heavyweight champion who ain't all that over versus the king of the ring who is pretty over Damien um, as leader of the judgment day, uh, co-leader of the judgment day. <laughs> I don't know the energy with Damien and Rhea in charge of the judgment day where like Rhea was clearly presented as the leader of the judgment day and then she got hurt. So then they were like, Damien, you are now, <laughs> The co-leader of the Judgment Day is very much like every time Becky Lynch would get herself over and then they would put Charlotte Flair in the angle. And it's like, <laughs> it's Becky Lynch is the man, but Charlotte Flair is the co-man. <laughs> it's like, anyway, I feel like Rhea Ripley got really over. And then, then it's like, Damien Brace, you are the co-leader of the Judgment Day. It's like, well, wait a minute. Why isn't, why isn't Balor the veteran? <laughs> the leader of the but group and said he was taking... when it started and then <laughs> right and then he's taking orders he's taking orders from Rhea Ripley now I don't know anyway it did feel like on Monday they are continuing to sort of set up the crumbs of Finn Finn and <laughs> Carlito <laughs> and what a faction and, and forehead guy are gonna you know, they're disgruntled and Finn doesn't like that because Damien's offering to be in his corner for the Walter match and, and Finn's telling him off and, and all that. And then uh, Damien does run down and save him after the match on Monday. Um, so it's like, you know, 
at some point probably Finn will turn on on uh, on Damien and I guess so you could have Finn and Dominic and I guess live live as like the new leads of that group and then Rhea and Damien go babyface I don't know <laughs> that feels like what makes the most sense but uh, I don't know how this plays out in uh <laughs> As far as priest keeping the title, priest winning the title, they really didn't do a whole lot other than to for this angle, other than to have Gunther cut some uh thinly veiled promos similar mm-hmm. to the ones similar to the ones that Triple H cut on Booker T in their feud, building to WrestleMania nineteen, where he calls priest street trash, which is a is a dog whistle <laughs> and famously everyone loved how that program with triple h and Booker <laughs> T uh worked out so we should just do that again i think i think gunther should just win the title clean here tell you what there's a couple of guys that uh the triple h uh completely destroyed their careers and one is carlito and one's booker <laughs> t and yet, here they have jobs for the company here in 2024. Sure. So the way that the way that Hogan always had his guys that he would uh, his Ed Leslies and uh, and uh, Honky Tonk Mans and guys like that, uh, Hunter has uh, the Road Dog and Carlito and uh, I forget Dog about. and Carlito. <laughs> And I mean, yes, it, Paul, generally speaking, is pretty good about making sure people that he stepped on to get where he is have jobs if they want them. Yeah. I, I guess you could say it that way. Yeah. Oh, I'm pretty sure so, Carlito was a was a Vince hire before. Well, he did. Yeah, he did come back at that uh, Royal Rumble or whatever, looking like an action figure. That's right. Vince put in a call to Carlos. Asked him to let this boy. <laughs> yes, I'm prepared to send you Dolph Ziggler, <laughs> one of our top superstars. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you have Primo and Epico back. Uh, Vince, you fired them nine years ago. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, that's WWE SummerSlam. The main card starts at 7 p.m. The pre-show starts at 4 p.m. What? Uh, and then I realized Collision starts at 5 p.m. on Saturday. So they are... Uh, it's a wrestling war. Sure. Look, if you're... <laughs> if you're the per- type of person who watches WWE pre-shows and you don't work for WWE... <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. Because <laughs> they don't even do matches on them. <laughs> no, it's just, just video vi- packages. Video packages that you will see again on the main show uh, if you have a high enough uh, Peacock tier. And uh, interspersed with talking heads of Peter Rosenberg and I guess it'll be like Big E and whoever is usually on those panels. Sam now. Roberts, yeah. Big E. Throw Booker T yeah, out Jackie there. Jackie Redman. Lot. Yeah. I think uh I think Cole and uh McAfee are hosting this thing though. I think. Oh, great. You know, I'm always yeah, it sounds wonderful. Want, I'm always wanting more Pat McAfee <laughs> in my life. So that's that's very exciting. Be sure to tune in at 4 p.m. for this uh this extravaganza. <laughs> 4 p.m. Eastern. That's right. All right. Uh, anything else you'd like to touch on here? Oh, G1 still happening. By the G1 way, G1 still happening. Hey, uh, like eight, eight guys are tied on top of each block. Imagine that. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of flip flop and not exactly strapping uh, the rocket to anybody. But there's still time. Um, and my only other note was that uh, the Wyatt Six uh, are still <laughs> there, so they're not so much like a spooky. Uh, a faction that's trying to take over the entire World Wrestling Federation so much as they just really don't like Chad Gable and are pretty much solely focused on uh, on killing him 
and Adam Pierce is annoyed that Chad Cable doesn't want to be killed. That's that's about the extent of their uh, their feud. Some five or six weeks after their wonderful debut on the wonderful variety show that is Monday Night Raw. Well, I just got a message across my screen that says your internet connection is unstable. Well, so am I. So there you go. Hopefully you can hear me, and mm-hmm. uh, hopefully that will uh, that will uh, will sign off with that. So until next time, everybody, enjoy SummerSlam, and uh, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. right folks those republicans they're shaking because of the right skewering they're gonna get when my rudolph returns to snl to play kamala harris this fall i guess he is going to play her the way that she plays all of her characters Uh uh-huh which is as maya rudolph correct and everyone will have no choice but to love it. Very similar to uh, m- most. Like Tina Fey actually tried to do something with Sarah Palin, I guess. But it's like, I'm just thinking about like Kate McKinnon as Hillary. Just kind of every Kate McKinnon character I ever saw on SNL. Maya Rudolph playing that or when she does Beyonce or whoever. Pretty much just just doing that same thing over and over again. Yeah. Feels like it's a common thing with a lot of like the people like uh what's his name that they have now who actually does a very good Trump impression. Uh those are a little bit more rare. It feels yes. like. Yes. Baldwin is Trump. Some of the <laughs> worst. <laughs> Some of the worst television ever produced by anyone. And yet I don't know if you know, this is the 50th anniversary of Saturday Night Live coming up here. It's wonderful. I can't wait for, for Lorne Michaels to finally get a little bit of shine. Finally, someone's going to sing the praises of Lorne Michaels in the television industry. You know, no one loves to celebrate themselves <laughs> as much as Saturday Night Live does. They love it. <laughs> There's a 45th anniversary special. There's a 40th anniversary special. There's a 35th anniversary special. There's a thir- anyway, you get the point. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine what they're going to do for the 50th season? They're going to do the saddest like <laughs> revival of various classic sketches from 30 to 40 years ago. You're going to have Chevy Chase playing Gerald Ford. Let's hope so. <laughs> Let's uh are, are Myers and Dana Carvey speaking to each other currently? Let's get them out there for a Wayne's World if they are. I would imagine that they are. I think there was a time where they were, but I think really long, long ago though. I think that was like in the early two thousands. What do you know? I wasn't aware of that lore. But uh Let's see. They did well, one for the fortieth, probably, which was ten years ago, I think. Yes, I do I do vaguely remember that. Uh yeah, you get that. You get Will Ferrell probably probably doing the the cheerleader thing with Molly Shannon. Ugh. Sherry O'Terry was the cheerleader. Oh, what was didn't Will Ferrell have it? A... Yeah, it was Will Ferrell and oh. Sherry O'Terry. Okay, okay, Sherry O'Terry. Um, I think Will Ferrell and Molly Shannon may have may have done a um. I don't know if they were like the school music teachers or if that was also Will Ferrell and Sherry O'Terry. I'm not sure. (laughs) Well, anyway, it's going to be great and it won't make you think about your mortality (laughs) or the mortality of anyone on screen. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, Had a thought that got lost somewhere between not being aware of... uh, Oh, I was watching a um, 
uh, American Film Institute uh, Tribute and Lifetime Achievement Award Ceremony for Nicole Kidman, because, of course, I was. Sure. <laughs> On brand. Yeah. And uh, and she, she fits the prototype. And um, uh, Mike Myers showed up on that. <laughs> it's like, what is the connection here? First of all, he stopped dyeing his hair. Oh. Um, so he's like got completely white hair. He might have had like a white beard or something, too. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I don't remember exactly what Mike Myers looks like in this thing, other than he was totally unrecognizable. <laughs> And uh, they showed a clip of him in a Saturday Night Live sketch with Nicole Kidman. And it was apparently like the only thing they ever did together. I'm like, was there a movie I missed? <laughs> like, just no. Friends in real life, I guess. Not particularly even. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> because they had some of those people show up and, and praise Nicole Kidman for 90 minutes. But uh huh. Mike Myers was just like, "Hey, we were in a sketch together once, and I thought that was really cool." <laughs> and so I'm here. I'm here to say, "You're really cool," which is fine. Except Mike Myers, like, famously doesn't leave his house. Yes, that is that is very fascinating. <laughs> yeah, but they got him out what? for the for the lifetime achievement award for Nicole Kidman. That's that's got is that like? But also, it's not. It's not like he's a massive. Sp- star or has been for like 20 years anyway right you so could like, argue so it's not like 20 years ago right if you were like uh you know what she's only met or only acted in one scene in one movie with you know george sir Clooney anthony hopkins or right. yeah but by god that's a big name and let's get him out there and and maybe he knows the director and he owes him a favor or something or whatever Sure. Right. It's like, okay, okay, that kind of makes sense to me. Of like, okay, you just wanted the name recognition. She's like, yeah, just getting this guy. It's like, what's, what's Mike <laughs> Myers doing descending from wherever he lives in, <laughs> in rural Canada to, right. <laughs> to make an appearance looking like the former pastor of our church when we were growing up, Dave Shives? <laughs> That's pretty much exactly who he looked like. I looked too. at a picture. That's I didn't just uh, guess that. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Good. <laughs> It's exactly like a pastor of a church in Baltimore in the mid 1990s. <laughs> it's, it's even more uncanny than I. <laughs> I just pulled it up. Oh my gosh. Like the, the amount of hair, the way the hair is cropped, like everything looks exactly like this. This is the yeah. least broad joke, even among <laughs> our incredibly narrow references that we make to David Letterman bits from. <laughs> 25 years ago the most narrow thing i think we've ever said on this podcast is mike myers looks like a guy we knew once (laughs) sorry sometimes the bonus features are just for us i don't know what to tell you uh nicole kidman is having this uh has this great career now where she's 57 years old Mm. but like if you squint maybe she could pass for 39 (laughs) <laughs> and so she can uh she can like play cougars and also old women and also like uh suburban moms. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like she's got a lot of range in her in her uh career choices right now. Yeah. Like she can she could be a mom, but the kids have to be like teenagers. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that that works. Yeah. And she's got right. that wonderful AMC movie uh career. <laughs> Yes, the bit where people stand up and salute that is uh, <laughs> is is quite good. It's a good deal. If I ever went to a movie again and it happened to be at an AMC theater, I think I would. I think I would do that. I try to keep on keeping on. 